Hey guys, Daniel here. This is another video, and in this video, I'll actually be discussing the new James Gunn's The Suicide Squad. I am so excited to talk about this. This film looks absolutely fantastic, and I have so many different things I want to talk about. I will actually be sharing my theory about how I predict the plot is going to go, and I also have a theory about how they're actually split up into two teams, and the first team ends up dying. Uh, but yeah, I'm so excited to get into this. For those who don't know, James Gunn's new Suicide Squad is film coming out August 6th, I believe and it's worked on by some fantastic people the Suicide Squad are traditionally a team of DC Comics characters well DC Comics super villain super villains uh, they're all a suit like a team of characters who the government sent to do wet work operations and missions that people like the Justice League are too morally compromised to do but the thing about super villains is that they'll do just about anything and in exchange for them doing jobs for the government uh, they kind of shave times off their sentences uh, I actually got to interview three different Suicide Squad writers here on the channel. Some of you may have seen those videos. I've been so lucky. Uh, but this is a video I've been wanting to make for a while. And what better time with the new Suicide Squad. The third trailer just dropped and it looks fantastic. Uh, and I will also be discussing each of the characters and who are the members. Uh, so there's actually timestamps in the description if you'd like to skip to a specific moment. Or I would be just as happy to have you here with me as I go through them. Uh, but yeah, so many different things to discuss. And actually, just to start, let me credit my friend Luke. Luke's been one of my very good friends for a long time. He's very kindly agreed to edit this interview. Uh, Luke owns my channel, basically. I made him my manager, so I live in constant fear of him. Uh, but yeah, he's a good person. He's very kindly agreed to edit this, and I have no doubt it's going to be one of his toughest jobs yet. Uh, but what else are friends for besides getting them to edit your YouTube videos, you know? Uh, but yeah, so without further ado, let me just get right into it. So I'll start off with basically what we know about the plot and what I guess the plot is. Uh, so like this, uh, James Gunn himself has said that he's very inspired by John Ostrander's Suicide Squad run. Some of you may actually be familiar with that. I got to interview John Ostrander and John Ostrander actually appears in the film. Uh, he can be seen as one of the doctors putting the bombs into the necks of the Suicide Squad. So I've basically interviewed someone who was in the new Suicide Squad already before the film has even come out. I know I'm brilliant, uh, but I'm trying to get some more Suicide Squad interviews. So maybe keep an eye on the channel and I might have some fun stuff coming up soon and um, but yeah so James Gunn himself has said that he's taken a lot of inspiration from that and John Ostrander has said that his run was very much like he wanted to keep people on their toes guessing and he killed a lot of characters at one point he even killed Rick Flagg who was like one of the main characters who's been on that comic for years and he just killed him like that so we kind of get the connotation that lots of people are going to die in this film James Gunn himself even said don't get too attached so that's not necessarily the best sign this could go either way uh, but yeah I'm so excited to get into it so my theory is that or so the, what the story is is the government sends the most dangerous super villains in the world e.g blood sport peacemaker king shark harley quinn and others to the remote enemy infused island of Co koto maltese uh, koto maltese actually doesn't exist james gunn created it uh, specifically for this a movie so i really love how they're doing it oh no sorry corto maltese and it's armed with high-tech weapons they trek to the dangerous jungles on a search and destroy mission uh, they are sent to destroy the prison and laboratory known as jotunheim formerly used by the nazi party and they are actually sent to wipe out of uh, like wipe out all traces of something called project starfish uh you know so something called project starfish which i will be getting into i believe this is a reference to starro as some of you may know starro he first appeared in justice league issue one if i'm correct he was the first ever villain the justice league fought i may be mistaken don't take my word on that uh, basically he's just this big giant starfish and he's been confirmed to be the villain of the new suicide squad we have seen him uh, in the new trailer in part three so in the third trailer but I cannot wait to see him but he's and so I will be discussing Starro in a little bit but basically we get the connotation that the American government don't want people to know about Starro so it's up to the Suicide Squad to just erase all traces and so here is where my theory comes in that there are two teams and the first team I believe consists of Captain Boomerang, Rick Flag, uh, TDK which is also the, arms, uh, the detached arms kid is that his name again what was his name TDK, the detached kid or something like that, because, you know, his arms basic. Oh, the detachable kid. That's right. Sorry. The detachable kid, Harley Quinn, Savant, Mongo, Javelin, Blackguard, Weasel, and it beats you out in Curse, and I believe everyone dies except for Rick Flag. I believe Rick Flag gets away, and I think Harley Quinn might get captured, and that's why in the first or second trailer we see that they go to retrieve harley quinn and i believe that's where that all plays in but i believe everyone dies including captain boomerang which is one that i'm so sad about because i love captain boomerang 
But I believe that because I think James Gunn is kind of doing that because he wants to show people that no one is safe from death. Everyone is going to die. So I believe he chose Captain Boomerang to go first, which is something that I'm like, I'm super sad about, but I think it kind of had to happen. But Captain Boomerang is one I'm sure is going to die. And in the trailer, I think it was the DC fandom release. We got to see some behind the scenes and we saw a beach shootout occur. And we saw Blackguard, who's being played by Pete, Pete Davidson. Uh, he put his hand up in the air and you can kind of see the furry carcass of the weasel behind him. So it's not looking too good for the weasel if I had to take an educated guess. Uh, but you never know, maybe he could. But I reckon everyone is going to die. Blackguard's going to surrender, but he will still get shot down. And Mongol, we see in the trailer, uh, she's being played by... Oh, I'll get to her later. If you'd like to see me dis discussing each character, you can go to the description where I leave a timestamp. Um, we see like she's hanging onto a helicopter and she's like flying around the place. And I'll also be discussing who I think dies. So you can skip to the end for that. But you see her holding onto a helicopter and she's the strongest member of the Suicide Squad because she's like from an alien race and she's very strong. So I believe James Gunn is going to kill her to be like, OK, no one is safe. If a superhero dies, how come these other people you assume would be safe, but they're not? So I can't wait to see how that plays out. Weasel, I feel, was just put in because, you know, hey, let's just friggin' kill a rodent, you know. He's been played by James Gunn's brother, Sean Gunn, who also played Rocket Raccoon in Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, but yeah, no, I reckon the weasel does end up dying, unfortunately. Javelin, yeah, he's going to die as well because we see later on Harley Quinn holds his bow, uh, which I will be getting more into each character later. But yeah, beat shootout incurs everyone except Flag dies. Harley Quinn gets captured. So Amanda Waller recruits Bloodsport, Peacemaker, Rick Flag, Ratcatcher 2, Polka Dot Man, King shark and all to save harley quinn uh, but by the time they get there it turns out she saved herself we actually got to see that in the trailer and then all of the squad goes to recruit the tinker uh so the tinker is being played by peter capaldi but yeah that's my uh, two team theory i believe that the first team will all end up dying except for rick flag and harley quinn they'll both survive but everyone else will die and captain boomerang because we haven't seen much of captain boomerang in the trailer and we haven't seen much of everyone else pete davidson himself said that he's not in the film for a long time so we kind of know he's dying and it turns out that i think one of the actors i'm not sure who it is said that no one is safe and about three people maybe even survive so i don't know how that's going to play and we have seen some cast photos where some of the cast have not appeared uh, so yeah i wonder how that's going to play out but yeah that's my two team theory and yeah so you heard my first theory about what i think the plot is about but you heard me touch on starro uh, so like i said starro is a character who originally appeared in the justice league to go up against the justice league he's this giant starfish who can kind of like i guess you could say he like leeches off his little starfish children who can control people they kind of like like think of the think of this what's it called from the face hugger from alien that's basically what starro has he has these little face hugger starros who can hook onto the face of people and then control them so that's basically who the starro is and we know from the trailer that he is the villain but james gunn himself said that they're not playing like Starro is actually being like he's in captivity and he's forced to do this uh, by the government who and that brings me to believe that Star Starro is not the only bad guy. There's a few other bad guys, I think. And we've seen in the trailer. I also think that the villains are Joaquin Cozo, who is playing Major General Mateo Suarez. Uh, we got to see him a little bit in the trailer. And I also believe his second in command man is Luna, who is being played by Juan Diego Boto. Because we don't know much about these two characters. I think they're both created by James Gunn, but they're kind of up in the air about who they could be. So I genuinely believe that they're controlling Starro and that he they're the reason that he's here and they're the reason he's finding the suicide squad i do think in the end the suicide squad will prevail except you know that's not to say there won't be casualties and i will be talking about the casualties now so let me move on to uh introduction introducing each of the characters for those who don't know i'll be talking about each character and i will also be discussing whether i think they will live or whether i think they will die and i have a long list of people here that i'm excited to talk about but first let me get into basically the star james gunn himself has said that this person is one of the main characters of the film and that character is Bloodsport. Now Bloodsport is being played by Idris Elba. I'm sure some of you have seen in the trailer. Uh, but Bloodsport is a character who actually first appeared in Superman Volume 2, Issue 4. He's created by John Byrne and Carl Kessel, who I, I got to interview Carl Kessel if you guys would like to check that out. He, in the comics, he didn't really have any strict superpowers. Uh, he was a Vietnam War draftee, so he didn't want to go, so his brother was drafted instead. And in the war, his brother got some, you know, life in, like, like, life injuries like some very bad injuries and he felt guilt about that uh, but he's a formidable hand-to-hand -hand opponent and he can actually teleport a weapon out of thin air 
Uh, so basically, or if there's a weapon in his close proximity, he can teleport that weapon to him or so. That's what we saw in the comic book. But in the film, James Gunn himself has said in the IGN trailer discussion, he believes he interpreted that as he. So in the film, Bloodsport has this like super cool black suit. And that black suit can like, it, like, let's just say he has something on his sleeve. He can pull that out and put it together and make a gun. So he has all these little bits of mechanical pieces on his suit that he can turn into weapons at any time, like a knife, etc. So he has all these different lethal weapons on his body, but that's how they're playing it. Um, but we can see in the film that, you know, well, or so the blood sports real name is Robert Dubois, but we can see that Robert does not want any part of this. He just wants to do his time. And he's actually in prison for putting Superman in the ICU, a.k.a. the hospital. That's right. Robert Dubois, a.k.a. Bloodsport, put Superman in the hospital with Justice Silver, with a kryptonite bullet, sorry. And, you know, kryptonite bullet would probably do a lot of damage. And that's actually something they got from the comic because that's what he did to Superman. Uh, but he just wants to serve his time, we can see. Uh, but Amanda Waller does something, maybe threatens his daughter. So that makes him say, okay, fine, I'll do it. Because he's a very valuable member to have. I was thinking when Idris Elba was announced, I thought he was going to play Bronze Tiger. And I was very excited for that. But still, Bloodsport is a very cool character. And I'm looking forward to seeing how they play him. And he's not necessarily like the moral center of the team. Sometimes in the Suicide Squad, they will add on a superhero just to keep the team balanced out. I know Robbie Thompson has been doing that with Superboy. Uh, but Bloodsport is only doing this because he wants to help his daughter. That's at the end of the day. Now, do I think Bloodsport will survive? This is what I'm not too sure about. But in the end, I kind of reckon he will survive because it's Idris Elba. But at the same time, I think if he does die, he will go out and he will die a noble death. And he will probably save everyone else. But that's really the only way I can imagine him dying if he does end up dying. Uh, but in the film, we can see that he also is kind of building up a dynamic with Ratcatcher 2, who's another character I'll be getting into. He Because I think he kind of, you know, he hasn't been in his daughter's life much because of his criminal life. So he sees someone like Ratcatcher, who's just a scared girl who doesn't, because she's, Ratcatcher too, is a character who doesn't really deserve to be there. Like, she didn't kill anyone like everyone. Like, most people on the squad are, like, just morally compromised, horrible people. But Ratcatcher too, I mean, she she tried to rob a bank, which is still pretty bad, but she's not as bad as everyone else, I guess you could say. Uh, but Ratcatcher too is actually an original character. James Gunn created her. She's actually based off a character created by Alan Grant in the Batman series. So in one of the Batman comics, there's a character called Ratcatcher who can control rats. I think his name was Otis Redding or something like that. It's Otis. Sorry, its name slips me, but it was Otis something. And, uh, you know, Otis, this character, he could control rats. He was kind of like the Pied Piper for rats, so he could control them. And she's the daughter of Ratcatcher. So that's why her name is Ratcatcher, too. And we know nothing about her. We don't know her real name or anything like that. Uh, but yeah, she seems so we can kind of see a budding dynamic between Bloodsport and Ratcatcher, too, there. And she's being portrayed by Daniela Melchior, which she seems to do a brilliant job. So I can't wait to see her in live action. Uh, but another character I want to get into is Peacemaker, the one, the only. He's being played by John Cena himself. Uh, oh, actually, I didn't touch on whether or not I think Ratcatcher will survive. Ratcatcher 2, I do not think she will survive. You know, I had you, I had you for a minute there. Uh, in the trailer, we see, like, she's teary-eyed, and, like, we see a big swarm of rats come from behind her. She's covered in rubble. I think this is either because she's about to die or uh, Bloodsport is about to die. So it's going to be one of those two characters. One of them is about to die and saving the other. So Ratcatcher 2 or Bloodsport will definitely... One of them will definitely die or so. That's what I think. Uh, but Peacemaker is one who I reckon will make it out alive. And this is because just too many things are going in Peacemaker's favor. And Peacemaker is such a funny character. Uh, for those who don't know, in the comics, Peacemaker is someone so obsessed with peace. That's all he wants. He will kill people. He will go to war for peace. I'm sure you can see the irony there. I don't have to explain it to you. Uh, he's definitely the duality of man. You can see that in him. His real name is Christopher Smith. Um, but his first appearance was in Fighting 5, issue 40. Uh, John Cena will be playing him. He's so obsessed with peace, he will die for it. I think, if anything, because he is getting his own HBO TV show, so I don't know if he will necessarily die. Because, you, you know, you don't give someone their own TV show and then kill them. But that's really all he has going in his favor. And he seems to be that super patriot. John Cena is perfectly casted. I, like most people, I think I was a bit skeptical about seeing John Cena in this role. But after seeing him, he really nails that patriot. And I think it couldn't have been more perfectly casted because John Cena is that type of person who you're like, uh, he represents red, white, and blue. So for him to play a character like Peacemaker is perfect casting. Um, 
But yeah, let me get into arguably the most famous character of the Suicide Squad, the one, the only Harley Quinn, who we have seen appear in all of the trailers. She's definitely one of the stars. She is one I know for sure. I am 100% certain in this. Harley Quinn will survive. I cannot imagine that they kill her. She's the biggest person in DC currently. And that's the equivalent of, you know, Marvel killing Iron Man. Uh, maybe that's not the best analogy, but at the same time, I really can't imagine that the killer, she's been in like, I reckon like maybe it's three now. She's been in Birds of Prey, Suicide Squad 1, and yeah, that's two, but that's still a lot. And I, I, I imagine they have more planned for her. So for them to kill her, even when she's probably at the height of her popularity, I do not see that coming. Uh, her first appearance was in Batman the Animated Series, but yeah, Harley Quinn 100% makes it, and Margot Robbie seems to be having a lot of fun in this, so I can't wait to see what happens. Uh, but speaking of people who appeared in the first Suicide Squad, car- uh, Suicide Squad film, another person I want to touch on is Captain Boomerang. Uh, you heard my theory last time. Captain Boomerang in the comics is an expert marksman. He basically throws boomerangs at people. He's like a marksman, and he's my favorite, one of my favorite members. I know I've interviewed John Ostrander and Rob Williams, two Suicide Squad writers, and they both said that they absolutely love uh, Captain Boomerang. And they did in that first, but they grew on him over time. But I feel like James Gunn is going to kill him just to be like, no one is safe. Captain Boomerang can go. So can your favorite character. So unfortunately, and like I said, I think he's on the first team, so he will die, or so that's my theory. Uh, but he's being played by Jay Courtney, which I actually really love. Jay Courtney is very talented. I was watching a film... Uh, with him the other day, it was that Liam Neeson, I think it was called Honest Teeth, but he's a very talented actor, and I really do like him as Jay Court, uh, as Captain Boomerang, but aka Digger Harkness, but he is not making it out alive, unfortunately. He's already appeared in the first one, so I guess he just decided to kill him. Uh, but another character who appeared in the first one, she is the leader of the Suicide Squad, Amanda Waller herself, being played by Viola Davis brilliantly. Uh, but she's obviously, she's not even like on a mission. She just controls the Suicide Squad. She put them together. She chooses the members. I think she's basically like, I guess you could say, She's the government official that works behind. She works like she's pulling all the strings of the Suicide Squad. Uh, she's She has no hesitation to kill any members that are not listening to her. You know, you disobey an order, you will get your head blown off. That's the Amanda Waller attitude. And she's a very intimidating character. She even went up against Batman in an issue of the Suicide Squad. So, you know, she's not to be messed with. Now, the next person I taught, I had a very definitive answer for, but now I'm a bit like, oh, will he make it out alive? It's Rick Flagg. Uh, he's the commander of the squad. Uh, he's being played by Joel Kinnaman. Uh, but in the comics, basically, Amanda Waller is the uh, like kind of leader, but he's the one out there in the field with them, keeping an eye on them, making sure they don't do anything bad. He's basically their commander. He reports back to Waller, make sure everything's in check. Uh, but yeah, we can we see, like I said, he's on team one. I reckon he's the only one that escapes. So then they go free Harley Quinn. At the end, he honestly, I think he has a good chance of surviving because he's Rick Flag. But you know, he James Gunn could pull a John Ostrander and kill him. You know, he could easily, he, just, he could just as easily kill uh, uh, Rick Flag because he was killed by John Ostrander in his run. Or John Ostrander didn't do it personally. John Ostrander wrote the death of Rick Flag, so you can kind of see how they could play with something like that. But yeah, I'm a bit skeptical. I think at the end of the day, he will make it out alive. And here is one who everyone loves. It's the one, the only. I got to interview the creator, Carl Kessel. That's right. It's King Shark. Now, King Shark is one I'm so excited to see. He's being played by Sylvester Stallone and Steve G, who both seem to be doing it brilliantly. King Shark was actually originally a Superboy villain. Basically, he's just this massive walking shark. You don't need any more backstory. I think you understand who he is. He's just a massive walking shark, and I love him. He's fantastic. I think he'll survive. And there's actually a theory I want to touch on that some of you may have seen the poster for the Suicide Squad. That should be popping up now, courtesy of my good friend Luke. Uh, but that poster, the poster you're currently looking at, there's a theory that everyone on that poster are the only people to survive. And honestly, I think that might be right. Or you could take it as everyone on that poster, you know, could survive. Or everyone on the poster is basically the main characters. But I could definitely see King Shark surviving. And I could see everyone on that poster surviving. But King Shark is such a great character and I love him so much. He's just so brilliant. Uh, in some comics, of course. There was one comic I read the other day where he, he beat up Killer Croc. That's not the King Shark guy. No, I'm only messing that was brilliantly wrote, written by Rob Williams and Dan Abney. Uh, but now another character who's won, this is a wild card, but you're just wait, just hear me out, just hear me out. Polka Dot Man. And I think he survives. I know it's it's probably a bit crazy because he literally, he's crazy and his gimmick is that he likes polka dots. You're probably sitting there like, you know what? Polka dots? 
But in the comic, he was literally just a B-list Batman villain created by Bill Finger. He was in it for a few issues, probably even one issue. He wasn't necessarily a big character. He's one of those comedic characters that everyone just takes the mick out of. He's being played brilliantly by David Dosmalchian, who is a lovely person. He re- retweeted my review of uh, Count Crowley, which was a comic he did. But David Dosmalchian seems to be a lovely person. I'm so glad he's getting this. He recently also played Calendar Man in... What was it? It was Calendar Man in... Oh, the long Halloween animated film. Uh, but yeah, Polka Dot Man, he can control dots on his suit and he can kind of throw them as weapons, if that makes sense. Like, imagine you have a playing card like Bullseye or like a knife or a dagger and you throw it. That's what he can do with his polka dots and he can turn them into weapons midair. Like, he can throw it and by the time it lands on someone, it will be a knife. I think that's his powers. Uh, but he also... Ha- can like shoot polka dots out of his gauntlet like his sleeve which i think is very cool but yeah and i love his design he's already become a fan favorite and we can see in the trailer that he wants to die he's like i just sell this character bloodsport says oh we're all gonna die and polka dot man says oh i hope so and he says it in such a funny way but yeah you kind of get the connotation that he wants that and we see i think he's gonna have a bit of an arc where he goes from hero to zero he goes from zero to hero because uh, we can see and he's kind of like, oh, I want to die. And then at one point he's like, I'm a superhero. So, yeah, I think, honestly, he's going to make it. That's just that's my opinion. Just wait till see. And then obviously I'm right because I can do no wrong. But another person I want to touch on, he's being played by Peter Capaldi. He was probably my favorite doctor, if not one of my favorite doctors. Uh, he is playing the Tinker. So you've probably seen some of the trailers. The Tinker, he has this, he's like a bald head with all these little bits of metal sticking out of it. He looks very odd. And I love the fact that he's being chosen for this. I think it's just perfect casting. Peter Capaldi is going to do brilliant. I remember when everyone heard he was in Suicide Squad. I personally thought he was going to play Mr. Freeze or Hugo Strange. Those were the two theories. But it turns out he's playing the Tinker, which is just as good you know just as good um but the tinker originally in the comics this there's been a few iterations of tinker he's been a few different characters this version seems to be the clifford devoe version and he's being played by peter capaldi but in the comics he was someone who was not very smart so he built this tinking cap that he kind of stuck onto his head where he it turned him into a brit it like it increased his iq now he's so smart and in the film they come to him for help so obviously he's a tactician he's a strategist he's brilliant he's a great planner master planner so that's kind of what we see in the film there so i wonder if they're going to increasingly play with that so i definitely think that he's going to be an integral member but he's going to die yeah i honestly think he's going to die he's not part of the first team that dies he will be a huge part later but he will inevitably die and as much as it pains me to say because i really really like peter capaldi but it's not looking good for him is it man Uh, but yeah he's such a cool character and unfortunately he is not making it onto the next one tdk aka the detachable kid aka arms fall off boy yeah ain't that a mouthful the tdk uh originally in the comics he was called arm fall off boy and he's such a funny character he's so pointless it's it just it makes me laugh he's being played by nathan fillion who was a brilliant actor and people are kind of sad that he's not playing green lantern which i agree with because you know he's built for green lantern but honestly i kind of think sam rockwell or colin farrell should play green lantern but I digress. Uh, the detachable kid is this character, literally, and I kid you not, he can take off his own arms and beat people with it. It's such a pointless skill. He's 100% going to die. But do I love him? Yes. He's fantastic. Uh, but he has this metahuman ability to detach his own arms and telekinetically control them. Uh, he uses it to fight crime and beat people up. And he was arrested and now he's sent with the rest of the team. Uh, but yeah, so basically in the trailer, we see his arms come off and he looks so smug and cocky. Uh, but he's not making it, unfortunately. He 100% dies. Uh, as much as it pains me to say it, because Nathan Fillion is brilliant, but we haven't seen much of him in the trailer. Uh, but yeah, it's such a funny power that I kind of want him to make it, because I think if anyone... I think there's going to be one wild card that no one expects that's going to make it, and I think that's Polka Dot Man. But if it's not Polka Dot Man, it could very well be the detachable kid, but I wouldn't get my hopes up. Uh, but the next one I want to talk about is Weasel. So Weasel is being played by Sean Gunn, uh, James Gunn's brother. And the weasel seems to be a very funny character. People that love him, even though he's super crazy. He's like this werewolf, I suppose you could say. In the comics, he was originally a person uh, who was bullied in school. So then he had never been dressed. A few years later, when he was older, he dressed himself up as the weasel because that's why he was bullied by. People kept on slagging him off, calling him the weasel. So he dressed up as the weasel and killed all of his high school bullies. That's not the approach they're taking here. He's not a man in a costume. In the Suicide Squad film, he looks to be just this creature who's super weird and yeah, yeah, I think that's really funny. But you can see it in the film. He looks to be super weird. 
Uh, but he's just this wolf. And another character, Peter Davison, Blackguard, he freaks out while sitting next to him. But I think that's so funny. But yeah, he's a werewolf. He dies. Yeah, Weasel is the character that they're putting in. They're going to kill him immediately. And in the beach shootout scene that we saw at DC Fandom, you can see kind of this slight little body of like this furry little carcass. And I, I think that's Weasel. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately, Weasel, you're not making it today, buddy. The next character is Savant, a.k.a. Brian Durlin, character created by Gail Simone and Joe Bennett, if I'm correct in saying so, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, but Savant, a.k.a. Brian Durlin, a.k.a. being played by Michael Rooker, is a vigilante originally. In the comics, this is the version. In the movie, it's still up in the air. I don't think it's the same in the movie. I'm pretty sure it's different. Uh, but basically, Michael Rooker... Uh, so, sorry, Savant is a vigilante who went out for crime. He came from a rich family. Batman didn't appreciate it because obviously Savant was only beating up criminals for fun. You know, he didn't really care about the people that they were being hurt. He just wanted to go beat up people. And so Batman said, you know, no, just quit. You're not made to be a vigilante. And so he said, if you, if I see you again, I will arrest you. That's what Batman said. So Savant is actually a very skilled in computers. Uh, so he decided to hack millions of databases and build up all this information and become a criminal and use it against Batman as re- to get revenge. It's kind of like that bad guy's... Uh, what's what's the bad guy's name from The Incredibles? S- syndrome. It's like that syndrome thing. Uh, but you can really, you really see that there. But yeah, he's being played by Michael Rooker and James Gunn loves killing Michael Rooker. Michael Rooker came to Dublin and I didn't get to meet him and I'm so fuming. I think I was on holiday or something. But yeah, no, I think, you know, Savant might, is not going to make it. He's on the first team. He's definitely going to die, unfortunately. Maybe, he'd see, maybe he'll make it, but he's definitely going to die. He's gone, croaked, you know, six feet under playing bingo with the worms, you know, playing uh, Scrabble with the mites, playing Monopoly with the termites. Did I say that? I don't know. Anyway, yeah, he's not making it. On to the next one, Javelin. Yeah, okay, Javelin, straight away, uh, he's not making it. Let me move on now. Anyway, Javelin in the comics, I'm pretty sure it's the same for the film. He's a German Olympic athlete who uses his Javelin for crime. Why? No one knows. It's a pretty awesome yes. Uh, but yeah, he uses his Javelin for crime. He's being played by Flula Borg. He was originally a villain in the Green Lantern series. That really does come true. Uh, but yeah, I don't reckon he's going to make it for long because we see Harley Quinn with this type of javelin. And it, I think it's the same javelin that Javelin used. You know, I, I know cat caught my tongue much. Uh, it's the same javelin that Javelin used and you can kind of see it there. So I think uh, Javelin dies, Harley Quinn steals his javelin and then just uses it for the rest of the film. So yeah, he doesn't make it. Only two more members to get through. Uh, Blackguard being played by Peter Davidson. He does not make it, unfortunately. We see in the trailer that's kind of up in the air. And J- P- Peter Davidson said that he's not in the film for much. It's more of a cameo. So I believe he's definitely going to be the first to die. But yeah, and we see in the film, in the film like I said, beat you out. He has his hands up. And I believe if he doesn't die, which I believe he will, then there'll be an ongoing joke about how he almost dies, but doesn't. And, you know, take me on this. There will be an ongoing joke where someone's constantly about to die, but they never do. You know, you you know, mark my words, that's gonna happen. Um, but in the comics, he's just a criminal who uses a special suit and he uses special equipment for crime. He uses all this high tech stuff. Uh, now this person is the strongest member of the Suicide Squad. It's Mongol. So Mongol in the comics is the son of Mongol and the brother, no, the sister of Mongul. Sorry, this is Mongol. Uh, but she's an alien warlord in the comics. She's a daughter of. A- uh, Almera, sorry if I'm not pronounced it right. Uh, but she has so many different powers: super strength, super speed, durability, uh, super speed, and like like I already mentioned, super speed. But she's just so powerful, and so like I said, I believe she's going to be killed just so James Gunn can be like, look, if the most powerful f- powerful person can be killed, no one is safe. So yeah, she is not making it. Unfortunately, she's being played by Mailing Ning- Ng. Mailing Ng. I'm not sure if I pronounced that right. I, would, I n- ng anyway but yeah i don't not think she's making it unfortunately but that's all the suicide squad and villains starro like i said and major general mateo suarez and luna um i honestly think that taika watiti he is definitely in the cast we just don't know where i think he's playing starro or so that's my theory uh, but some other characters who we know are going to be in it we just don't know what role they're being in is alice braga alice braga i think she's playing a character called soul so soul Sorira. Or something like that. It's something along those lines. If we could just find a shoot where I wrote it on, man. Uh, but yeah, it's like Soul Saria, I think. But we don't know much about her character. She's not a member of the squad. I think that she just encounters them on their way. Oh yeah, Alice Braga, Sal Saria. Yeah, she's going to be in it. But I think her character is that 
we see that she's kind of like a military person. So I think she's maybe trying to overthrow the government, a.k.a. Luna and uh, Major General Mateo Suarez. So I think she just ends up helping the Suicide Squad a little bit to help them destroy the Starfish. So I think, yeah, she does not make it. I reckon she does. Uh, but a few more other characters who are set to be in it. Uh, Storm Reed is playing the daughter of Bloodsport. Tanishi Kajesh is playing Flo Crawley, a character created by John Ostrander. And Jennifer Holland is playing Amelia Harcourt. So I'm so excited to see them both in those roles. Emilia Harcourt's character, I think she ended up betraying the squad in a few issues. I'm not too sure. But yeah, those are all the members of the Suicide Squad. Let me know who you think will die in the comments down below. I reckon it is not looking good for anyone. Any, it's anyone's guess. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Before I finish up, if possible, please make sure to donate to the National Deaf Children Society. Uh, that's National Deaf Children Society. There'll be a link for that down in the description. Uh, but yeah, this has been such a fun video for me to make it probably won't be up for another few weeks because my friend luke will be editing it but everyone yet so uh, everyone on tree let's do a big thank you to luke one two three thank you luke i'm gonna assume you all did it and if you didn't you know what the hell man uh, but yeah it was this was such a great uh, video to make uh you know if you don't watch the suicide squad film then that's just that's basically suicide yeah i said it okay i said it and it's a good joke it's a good joke i'm proud of that joke so you know yeah i see i know you're laughing i know you're laughing that's a good joke anyway yeah that just about concludes uh, my discussion Everyone go check it out. I believe in Ireland and England, where I'm I'm an Irish fella. So I believe it comes out in Ireland uh, uh, July 30th in or July 30th and in America, I think it's August 6th or maybe it just comes out August 6th everywhere. So that's what it says in the poster. Everyone make sure to go check out the trailer. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you all in the next video. Stay safe and stay cool. If possible, please make sure to like and subscribe as I, um, my friend Luke put a lot of effort into this video. So I should be rewarded for that. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Luke, please don't delete my channel. I will see you on next video. Please donate National Death Trinity Society. Link in the description. Go follow me on Twitter at SamboGizmo1. Let me know what you thought of this video. Let me know if you'd like to see more of these style videos. And for anyone new joining us, uh, please be so kind as to subscribe. Even just one little subscription would help me out loads because I do know it's even when it goes up one. And it makes all this worth it just to know that there are people who genuinely enjoy my content. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you all in the next video. Stay safe. And I will see you all later. Long live King Shark. Bye.